when we're needing large pieces of fabric for sewing projects, quilting projects, when we're needing to do garments in a hurry, spray painting is definitely the way to go. We've talked about how to mix up the colours ready for spray painting. The key now is how to apply that colour to your fabric. And I'm going to show you that with water. I suggest you practice with water too, just to get the action right. Okay, so I've got some water in my bottle here and just an old sheet so we can see what's happening. When we're spray painting, we don't want a jet. We don't want just a fine line of colour like that. We don't want a mist that goes everywhere. We want a spray that's going to end up about the width of your hand when you're working about 10 centimetres away from your um, work. Whether you're working flat on a table or hanging your fabric on a clothesline or on a coat hanger in a tree or something like that. Working close is the key to this. Okay, so let's just get my sprayer adjusted. Not quite there yet. Not quite there yet. That's getting better. We need to have that width, that hand width. You can hear it's a sort of a s noise, not a funny little t -t 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 noise, because if you're getting that nice smooth noise, you can apply that colour very evenly and easily to your fabrics, whether it's laying flat or hanging vertically. Once you've practised with water, it's then just a case of doing the same thing with your colours. Before you use your sprayer, make sure you get rid of the water back into your bottle so that when you put your sprayer into your bottle of colour to start working, you're not going to get water out for your first few squirts. I suggest when you're doing this that you get all your sprayers working with water before we start colouring. So just have that bottle of water handy, get everything happening, put your sprayers into your colours and you're in business. Our spray colours are prepared, we know we've got our sprayers working and it's now time just to check the colours coming through well. You can either do that on an old towel or something and check the width, but why waste that colour on an old towel if you could put it on a, another piece of fabric? Mmm, that looks good. And that piece of fabric is going to be my all day mop up. I have actually prepared all these sprayers ready for action. For this exercise, I'm just going to be showing you how to work on some pillowcases. But this can work, of course, on any large piece of fabric. And there are many ways you can go. You can either spread your fabric out flat or you can scrunch it up before you spray it, no matter what you do, is going to cause different things to happen. I'm just going to do mine flat. And I'm working on a poly cotton, a cotton, and a flannelette pillowcase, just so you can see the difference of how the colours grab in the different fabrics. Of course, if you're working on something like satin, it will be different again. So I'm just going to spray these colours on and have a ball. I'll go right across. If the pillowcases are wet, so I don't have to worry about drying lines, and I usually like to work on um, cottons wet for this. It just gives you that lovely movement through the fabric. The blobs are not a worry. While there's moisture, there's movement. You won't even know they're there when the pieces are finished. Just that nice, steady spraying action. When they're done, it's totally up to you as to how you want to, to handle them from there on. You can scrunch them, you can salt them, you can put them out in the sun with objects on them, all those things that you already know.
How quick and easy is this? Five degree angle down to your fabric and really there's hardly any overspray at all but do make sure you've got an old cloth there underneath to pick up anything that goes over. You can see this is quite safe to do in my studio <laughs> if you're not quite brave enough to do it in a room. Set yourself up with your table all just plastic on the ground outside. Now you can really start to see the way those colours are gripping differently on the different fabrics. Hey, interesting fact of life, folks. I can notice quite a strange smell coming off this navy. And this is a colour that's been mixed up for ages. Don't worry about strange smells in your fabrics. It's just typical of liquid radiance and that smell will go completely when the fabric is done. My next step will then be to flip these pillowcases over and colour the other sides. You don't need to see me do that. Then we can handle them and see what else we can do. I've left these pillowcases just a couple of minutes now and you can see the colours have moved a bit more from when I first applied them. Um, the flannelette hasn't done much because that's a significantly heavier fabric. There are a couple of ways you can now go with it. You can either do a bit of a touch up or if you like what you see, leave it like that. If you want to work those colours through to the other side, yeah, I know I said you could flip it over and colour it that way, but another really simple way is just to roll it up, work your colours through this way, and you're less likely to go into excess. Of course you can use the five finger foam brush method to spread those colours too, if you want to get them more even. And I think by the time that's dry, there's significant colour on the reverse. We'll just touch up the end here, where there's not quite so much colour on the, the triple thickness. And I think there's even enough to roll the other two pillowcases in exactly the same way without having to touch up on the back. So you can be the best judge of this. There is a bit of overspray around the, um, the pieces but not a significant amount. So here we go with our mop up. Being careful you don't lean in wet colour. Another one of those yummy all day mop ups. It's going to be beautiful as a background or even as a piece of its own. And just for fun, let's see what happens when we turn our sprayers onto a jet and hit the fabrics. Love working on toweling. Toweling with spraying works brilliantly. Here I've got a wet piece of cotton, a dry piece of cotton and a hand towel. Basically we can just race around. Don't get too carried away with this one inside the house. This one is really good outside on the clothesline. Word of warning. When you are working over concrete, please put down old sheets on the ground so that you don't have stained concrete. Not a good look. 
We know from the water drop test on this dry piece, those colours will bleed and stop. On the toweling, we're really just working on the loopy bits. It's not going right through. So if you need a patterning on the reverse of that one, you work from the other side as well. I think I better stop before I go too far.